Images of the Wild West rely on cowboys and gunslingers, the adventurous life of an outdoorsman. With sayings like, Go West, young man, when the gold rushes in California, South Dakota, and other places raged. Women could also earn their fortunes, certainly, but it was rarely as pleasant. Between starvation and physical abuse, venereal disease, and suicide, fell the woman of easy virtue. She may have worked in a brothel, a crib house, or the lowest of the low, a hog ranch. Immigrants widowed on the journey joined teenage runaways and women who escaped capture by Native American tribes. In today's video, we'll explore the life of the Wild West prostitute from the bottom of the barrel to the top. Many women resorted to selling themselves when their husbands died, as one German immigrant did. Others had been kidnapped as children by Native Americans. The main fear their parents had was that the kidnappers stole their daughter's purity. Even if this wasn't the case, any woman who managed to return home after such an incident, and was over a certain age, met everyone's disgust and disdain. But perhaps the most common way women fell into this life was through treachery. Brothel madams fed teenage runaways, slipped them some opium, and put them in bed with a man. After that, they couldn't go home. Their parents would throw them out, and everyone knew it. Similar paths occurred with women who fell in love with the wrong man, an abuser who pimped her out or sold her to a brothel while he gambled and prospected for gold. The lowest of the low were working in a hog ranch. The prostitutes were not actually housed in old pig farms. These were U.S. Army warehouses, and they were called ranches because they weren't in towns. The women who worked here were old or diseased. Their looks had faded, hair grayed, senses ensnared by opium, and bodies racked by tuberculosis. In a word, they had nowhere else to go, and very little money coming in as soldiers weren't paid much. As an old joke ran, the army would take them since no one else would. The living conditions weren't much better. Hog ranches technically had to be three to five miles from military bases, but sometimes they were near the latrines. The women themselves usually had tents or shacks they lived in and worked in. If they got real lucky, they might have a small cabin and when it came to work, they were far beyond sore. Above the hog branches, you'd find the crib house. It was usually a small house or cabin with a front bedroom and a kitchen in the rear. They usually had a red lantern or red curtains adorning the front. The women who worked here might be independent. Naturally, conditions were better than the hog house. These women had more financial means and weren't barely scraping by with disease and old age, like their lower-rung counterparts. Above them were the brothels run by madams. These places could be far fancier with fashion imported from the east. Their gowns were generally tight with deep décolletage, the girls' rooms were always on the second floor, if there was one. First-class places set a good table and prided themselves on their cellars, offering choice cigars, bonded bourbon, and the finest liquors and wines. Customers could enjoy champagne suppers and sing with the girls around the piano. In very high-class houses, the women could only be seen by appointment. Here is where a fortune could be made. However, most fortunes would be made by the madam, who frequently was once a prostitute herself and may still entertain a few select clients. Either way, the madam always got her cut from the girls working in her house. Despite these differences in working conditions and earnings, the prostitutes had several common threads running through their lives. 
For one, there was always the fear of venereal disease. Antibiotics were a long way off, and syphilis ravaged the brain and visage of its victims. While condoms had already been invented, men didn't necessarily use them. Due to social attitudes, the law also took a very lax view of raping prostitutes. Not only was it difficult to prove, but such a woman was hardly viewed as a citizen, and when she was selling her body, what matter could rape be? So even if a prostitute could in theory refuse a man with evidence of venereal disease, he could get away with assaulting her and still give her syphilis. This lack of condoms also led to childbirth considerations. Primitive versions of modern abortion or contraceptive pills existed, but it's unclear how effective they were. After 1860, diaphragms were available, but the most common form of birth control was abortion, which had also spread as a form of birth control to even the respectable women. Between 1850 and 1870, one historian estimated that one abortion was performed for every five to six live births in the United States. Still, births happened. It was not uncommon to find a string of children outside a lower-end brothel or crib house. The higher-earning prostitutes could afford to send their children away to keep them separate from their lives and work, but most women didn't earn that much. The children themselves frequently joined the trade or similar ones when they were old enough. Girls becoming prostitutes and boys becoming bartenders and bouncers. In the end, very few women made fortunes. Thank you for watching. Leave a like, subscribe. There's always more history.